All right, hey, track kids, this is 12-1. We're skipping to chapter 12, and we're doing three sections out of chapter 12, and that is all for the rest of the year. I did not, because yeah, I gave her exactly the same thing as what I gave you. No. Because no, no. I literally printed these. No. Kira, you don't have 11-1. You have 12-1. Here you go. Kira, you have 11-1. Don't think it's right. No, <laughs> she doesn't. Um, all right, solving systems of equations. Uh, yeah, we have... Um, equations that look like this. This is a system of equations. Normally we just have two variables, x and y, and two equations. Now we have three variables and three equations um, that we're going to solve for at the very, very end of this lesson. So those ones are a little bit more steps to them, but they're the same steps as solving like two equations. This one has four variables with three equations. How unpleasant is that? This one has uh, squares in there. So these, do you know what, a, do you know what an x squared plus y squared equals 25? Like if I were to graph that, what that would look like? No, a parabola. Mm -hmm. No. That would just Double be x parabola. squared and, and just y, right? Y equals x squared is a parabola. What about if you have both variables squared? Mm -hmm. Probably like a D. Wait, 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 don't go me. Go but you're, I just yeah, it's, a oh, it's a circle, yeah. right? It's a circle. Yeah. This. This would be a parabola, right? X squared minus Y equals 7. We're doing that. Okay. So, like, this would somehow be a parabola and a circle going on at the same time. What are we trying to solve for when we're doing this? 7. Ow! Where they cross. Where they cross. That's what we're trying to solve for the whole time. Cray, put your phone away. Yes. The whole time we're trying to cro find where they cross each other. Mallory, put your computer away. Yep. Yep. Um, example 1. Solving systems numerically. Find a solution of the system of equations below by using a table of values to plug stuff in. Okay, what would you like to pick? Seven. Yeah. What? One. Seven. We're going to do X and then we're going to do Y's and Y's, right? Um, Let's do zero and something. Two and... Let's choose like... I don't know, negative 3, negative 2, two negative three, 1, 0, is, 1, 2, two, 3. Yep. Let's do that. Uh, let's just do negative 2 to 2. Yeah, yeah, let's yeah. just do that. Let's do negative 2 to 2. Okay, if I plug negative 2 in for x right here into the first equation, this is going to be negative 4. Then you add the 4 over, so this would be 5, and negative y equals 5, so y equals negative 5. Yes. So I found the first y, okay? The second y, or in the second equation, if I plug negative 2 in there, this becomes negative 6. Then what? Add the 6 over. 2y equals 18 divided by 2, and this is 9, okay? So the one has a spot of negative 2, 5, negative 5, the other one has negative 2, 9. Right. Not going to work. we got to have the same y coordinate, okay? If I plug in negative 1, negative 1 in for x, the top one would be negative 2, add the 2 over. Three. Negative y equals 3, so y equals negative 3, okay? We plug in negative 1 into the bottom. 3 times negative 1, negative 3, add the 3 over. 2y equals 15, and y is like 7.5, something like that, yeah? No, exactly. Exactly oh that. Goodness. Yeah. Zero. Zero, zero. Um, the top one is negative one. The bottom one is six. Did I do that right? Yes. Do any of these come out correct? No. Marcus, you no. said twos? It's two and three. Okay. We'll find out. One. If I plug one in, this would be two. Subtract the two over. This is negative one. Negative y equals negative one. So y is one. Yeah. Plugging 1 into the bottom, this would be 3. Subtract the 3, so 2y equals 9. What's y? 4 and a half. All right, now 2. Let's see if Marcus is right. So if I plug 2 in, this would be 4. Subtract the 4, that would be negative 3. Negative y equals negative 3, so y is 3. Okay, if I plug 2 into the bottom, this is 6. Subtract the 6. 2y equals 6. And y is 3. three. Boom. So what is the solution? 2. No. X equals 2. Kind of. Where do those things cross each other? 3. three. So 2, three, right? What are we even trying to find? We're trying to find, find the place where they cross each other. So I'm plugging numbers in for x and seeing what the y's are. 
And the place where the y's match up is the place where they cross each other. So two comma three, okay? That is my least favorite thing to do, is plugging crap in. I don't make you create a whole table on your homework assignment. I just make you plug junk in. I give you a solution, okay? Let's go down to this one, example two. We have to graph this thing, and we're solving by graphing, okay? So make a little graph off to the side. I should have given you like a little graph paper, but that's fine, okay? I don't know. <laughs> okay, so second example, before I graph it, I have to solve these things for y. I have to get the y by itself, right? Both of them for y? Both of them for y, y. right? Okay, so. Y equals 2x minus 1. Y equals 2x minus 1. I'll buy that if you move all the stuff. 2x minus 1, got it? Okay. Y equals 3 over 2x. Negative 3 over 2. Y equals negative 3 y over 2x plus Two, yeah? Whatever. Whatever. You got to get it right, though. Okay? So those are my two equations. If you solve for y, do you guys want to see me solve for y? Or do you understand what I just did? No. Like moving the x over, solving for y. Okay. Start with minus 1. And then from there, up 2 over 1. This is like algebra. This is fun. I mean, kind of. Sure. Okay, there's that. And there's that. There's my first, the top equation. Okay? The bottom one, I'm going to graph it in a different color. Starting at 2 and going down 3 over 2. Down three over two. Do you have a VCR player? I don't know. Why do you want a VCR player? Do you have one here? Ha-ha. Uh -huh. have one here. Oh, man. I don't. Nope. I don't. Okay. There it is. Now, even on my crappy graph, I can kind of see where they cross. Where do they cross? 1-1. One, one. One, one. That's going to be the solution. Now we can check that to make sure that that is the correct solution by plugging back in, but we're not going to because we know we did it right, right? 1-1. One, one. Okay? That's by graphing. That is also not my really favorite thing to do. Okay? Kelsey. Kelsey, come on. Okay. Pay attention to this because these are when weird things happen. Ready? There are three things that could happen. This is what happened in the last two problems. Two lines cross each other at one point, and we have one solution. Circle the where, where it says one solution. Okay? Now, I could have two lines that are parallel to each other, which is the left graph, yeah? And if I have two lines that are parallel to each other and they, like, don't touch, how many solutions do we have? Zero. No. None. No solutions. So you can write no solutions or a circle with a line through it. That's what people say. They are not touching at all. Okay, or I could have two lines that are exactly the same line. Let me show you an example of that. Like y equals 2x plus 3 and 2y equals 4x plus 6. How do I know those are the same line? Because they're the same equation. They're the same equation. I've just taken this one and multiplied by 2, right? So it's the same equation and I have those together. They are living on top of each other. So how many places are they touching? All of them. Infinitely many. That's why we have infinitely, infinitely many solutions. You can put the infinity symbol or you can put all reals down. I don't care because they're touching at all of the places. All right, let's keep trucking on At here. all of the places. Okay, let's go down and solve this one by substitution. So we're on the second page. Solving by substitution. Here we go. Do you remember what substitution is? Yeah, you got to yes. turn one okay. for x equals that and then put it in the... Right, right, right. So it doesn't have to be x and it doesn't have to be y that you're solving for. So okay, one so of one, these... One no, we're, no, that's elimination. We're not doing that. Okay? You're going to solve so, for y on the top one. Okay, so you have options. You can no, choose this x, sure. this y, this x, or this y. But Emma wants to do the top y, y. Because it's already there. You don't have to divide anything. Because there's no number in front of the y. That's a really good choice. So... I want to solve this thing for y and get y by itself. So if I move everything, what will that look like? y equals 3x minus 12. 3x minus 12. Then you got 2x plus okay. 3 All right. and in parentheses 3x minus 12 equals 2. Why don't you make a 3 hundred? And then you're going to Good question. So how did you move it, Emma? Well, so I subtracted the 3, so that's a negative. Okay, so she has negative y equals negative 3x plus 12, right? If you move the 3x over, right? Yeah. And then divide by negative 1, right? Yeah. So y equals positive 3x minus 12. And then you have yeah, okay. Then where does this thing go? Where does that go? Up in the butt. No. Plug it into the 3y. 
Plug it in for three Y. Okay. So hold on. You're just ahead of us. I'm sorry. Okay. In for the Y. Three X minus twelve. Cray, I am not going to tell you again. I will take it from you. I don't care. Ah, perfect. Thank you. Okay. Now distribute. Do X plus. Equals 3.4. Emma's way ahead of us. I don't. What do you got? Uh, Distribute. It's taking too long. That's because I like her and not you. Okay, add the 36. 11x equals, if I add 36 over, what's that become? Terrible. 38. Ooh. Yeah, and it's 3.45. 3.45? Gross. Gross. Yeah. And then we still have to solve for y, but but we plug it back in. And I'm going to plug it in right here. Y equals 3 times 3.45 minus 12. What would you get? If you take that times 3 minus 12, what do you got for y? Negative like 2 something probably. Nah, negative 1 something. Do it. You What'd you get, Emma Carr? No, you uh, don't have to. Just, Three times have to whatever you got, minus 12. Uh, negative 1.6. Okay. So, 3.45 comma negative 1.6. Oh, I I All right, why do I care about that? What happens there? Those two lines cross each other. Yep, very nice. Okay. All right, now, this is the one Cray likes. What do you want to do, Cray? Bottom times three, you're going to cancel the y's? Yeah. Okay, that's fine. Bottom times three. So the top, where I'm just going to rewrite the top. Okay, bottom times three. Give it to me. What you got? All right. 6x okay. plus 3y okay. equals 3. Okay, add them. Uh, 7x okay. equals 7. Ah. Wow. X, equals X equals 1. Then what? 11. And then you plug 11. it in. Top or bottom? No, Pick. Uh, do the top. Top. Okay. So one in, minus three y oh, equals four. I then what? Minus one. So negative three y equals three y equals negative one. Okay. So your coordinate point is one, one. one. No, one negative one. one. Beautiful. Lake, awesome. Yeah. Almost too easy, right? Yeah. That was really fast. So people in the video, if I went too fast, pause. If you need to. Okay. More bodies are expected to turn up as water levels decrease. What are you talking about? Who is it? All right. You people who think you know what you're doing and haven't been listening thus far, Marcus, listen right now. Okay? These next two examples are going to be examples of when you get parallel and when you get the same line. And I'm going to show you what it looks like using algebra, right? We know graphing wise, if I get parallel lines, there's no solutions, right? But if I'm doing substitution and elimination, like which one is, like, how do I tell whether it's no solutions or infinitely many solutions? Here we go. This one they want us to do by subs or by elimination. What would you like to do? Times which one? Negative. Times negative two. Top one times negative two. Okay. All right. So um, this would be negative four x plus six y equals negative ten. Yeah. So I'm going to add these two together right here. These two are getting added together. Okay. So we are on example five. Okay. So we multiply the top one by negative two, okay? X's go away. Y's go away. And I end up with zero equals negative nine, negative nine okay? Uh, Is that uh, no infinite solutions infinite. or infinitely many solutions? Yeah. Why isn't no solutions? Because when does zero equal negative nine? It never, it never, this never happens. Zero is never equal to negative nine, never. So that means this is no solutions. So if I would graph this, what would it look like? If I would graph this, what would these two things look like if they have no solutions? They're not touching, which means they are? No solution. Yeah. What does it look like if they have no solution? They're parallel, right? These lines are parallel. Yeah. Okay, they're parallel. Okay, next one. Solve the system of equations below by elimination. Here we go. These two, what would you like to do? We're going to have to do something to each one, I think. Okay, what would you like to do? Uh, 
Three. Top one times. Top one times three. Bottom times two. Bottom times two. Okay, top times three. Go. Okay, six x plus twelve y. Minus twelve y equals. Equals eighteen. Okay, bottom. Uh, negative six x. Okay. Plus twelve y. Okay. Okay, so over here we got cross cross. So we have zero equals zero. When is zero equal zero? Always, always is zero equal to zero, which means that I can plug anything I want to in for x and y, and as long as I do it to both equations, I'm going to end up with the same answer. So infinitely many solutions, and these are. Yeah, we should call it a day. I might, I might. Infinitely many solutions, which means these two lines are the. Same. same line. They're just multiplied by Ooh. something, right? They're the same line. Yeah. Okay? All right. We will stop. If, if you will work under the condition that you work, tomorrow we'll do the 3 by 3. Okay? Good? All right. Use your time to work. You can do, like, all of these except the last, like, 3 or 4. Okay? Do them. Go. Make sure that you are using substitution when I tell you to use substitution. How do I make one of them change? Yeah, you multiply one equation by something, whatever. Okay. All right, there you go.